The session begins with my client blowing into the stone to inform it with the energy pattern that might be blocking his ideal experience around his business. So let's see. Using the stone and pendulum to amplify the energy coming from the chakras, we're able to track which chakras contain the blocked energy around this particular issue and that's the chakra we'll be placing the stone on to remove that energy to send it to the earth okay so third and fourth Then I proceed to facilitate the removal of the energy to help the stone pull that energy and return it to the earth where the energy will be mulched and free my client of that particular pattern. At the same time, I'm tracking to see what the original story might have been, the original wound that caused the energy to get stuck in those chakras and in his luminous body in the first place then later I'll be able to use that information to help reframe the story for my client and create a new story. Noticing in your body, if anything, here. I had some uh, sharp pain in my right forehead for oh. a little bit. Okay. Delaying brought on some real lightness. As you feel things physically, or you get visions or emotions, it's just the energy ringing a bell on the way out as the stone uniquely digests and removes it from you. So a stone is doing a good job of removing what looks to me to be primarily a culmination or a buildup of little incidences that you judged yourself for you feel a little guilty for engagements mostly with people so we're releasing that okay it was just your perception that that you did something less than you would have preferred but there are no victims it was part of their script you played the role 
we need to release it all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be rattling. We're going to do the death rites. I'm going to like send you on a journey. I'm going to place a cloth over you. <coughs> and on that journey, I want us to go back. I want us to go down into the earth, and we're going to, down through a column of light, we're going to pass various chambers, if you will, each chamber representing a lifetime. And in that chamber are all the people you thought you wronged, okay, that you perceived as such. It didn't really happen, but you perceived it that way. And in each of those, okay, we're going to visit that version of you, and we're going to think, we're going to tell that person, he's okay, he did all right, he's forgiven, okay, you're going to be forgiving yourself, all right? You ready for that? Yeah. taking my client on a journey into his past lives to resolve some old issues and at the same time I'll be performing what we call a soul retrieval where I will be bringing back parts of his soul that were lost as a result of the trauma that he experienced during these lifetimes and these events and you'll see me blowing those soul parts back into his luminous body as we use the breath to transmit energy in this tradition. And likewise, I'll be blowing a power animal and an object that represents the gifts that he receives when he's whole again and that he has for the world and the power animal that will help protect those soul parts for him. <coughs> Palo Santo, burning away all toxic internal dialogue, no need to ever question your heart, your motives. Your heart is pure, your heart.
always follows your pure intent. Your mind cannot judge. It's too small, it doesn't have the broadest perspective, so as the heart does, as the eagle does. So let it trust and serve the feminine, your body, your heart, your gut. Feeling. <clears throat> Why don't you sit up, turn around, and face me, and we'll do destiny retrieval. Okay. <clears throat> so now, you're gonna be looking left eye to left eye. So you're gonna just stay focused on my left eye, okay? And I'm gonna track the you going forward that has already experienced, okay, that unconditional abundance just like we talked about, where you're able to receive the resources you need, but you stay, your heart stays dominant, the feminine, okay? So that, that comes to you, so that it doesn't matter where it comes from or where they're at, okay? So here we go. <clears throat> In the final part of the session, now that we've cleared my client of the old patterns that might have been blocking his ideal experience around his business and performing the soul retrievals that allow him to be in his full power in manifesting the more ideal destiny. We are now going to do the destiny retrieval, which is to go forward in time and find the energetic patterns of that person he's becoming and bring those patterns into the present, into his luminous energy field so that those are what are influencing him and pulling him forward into that destiny. Okay. What'd you notice? Some help from the jungle. The feminine, yeah? Good. Old. Yeah. And you were able to receive it yeah, fully? Sorry. Yeah. Okay, good. Smiles. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Beautiful. Absolutely. Um, Craggy stone. Old, old. Mm-hmm. Lineage. Mm-hmm. Bio. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Everything was coming in from all directions, feeding your heart, building that out, increasing the receptivity, you know, of the feminine, of the jungle. How no matter what it is, it gets mulched, no matter, it becomes fertilizer, no matter what. Right. You know, and this doesn't control that process. Right. This doesn't decide. Thank God. <laughs> you know, this gets out of the way, yeah. lets you receive from here. So that's what that's the destiny, you know, we we brought in. Was just this this being the jungle that just says, I'm ready to receive. No matter what. Yeah. Unconditionally. <clears throat> nice. Yeah. Yeah, the blessings are there as long as you allow them, you know, and we needed you to to, to forgive all those incidences, to be completely forgiven. Yeah. You know, of yourself to see how, the, the, how everyone else had forgiven you already, you know, from their broader perspective. And so, no need to hang on to it, so you were free. <laughs> good, very good. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Mm. Cool. Back to the modern, thank you. Otrongo, Chokachinja, thank you. See you again. Yo.
up and up, Akuna. Up and up, Akuna. Up and up, Akuna. Up and up, Akuna. Up and up, Thank you. Pacha Mama. Thank you, Mother. Thank you. Thank you, Taita. Mama Kia. <laughs> Good session. That was powerful. Very powerful. Whew. Forgiveness. Nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so each and every one of these sessions, every journey is unique. This particular journey for Peter, what we did was send, was bring him back in time to all of the lifetimes where he had felt, he had perceived that he had wronged somebody, that he had been the perpetrator of something. And we needed him to be able to forgive himself of that, let go. Let go of that perception. Because it isn't even necessarily a reality, it's just his perception. And in doing so, we were able to clear the blocked energy from the heart chakra and the third chakra. And the third chakra is where we engage. The third chakra is where he needed to engage with his partners and business in order to receive the resources he needed to further his work, you see. And his heart is pure. His heart was dialed into the work. You know, his heart and his intent is, is beautiful. But his own self-judgment, his own guilt, was not allowing that to be completely open to receiving. Okay, so in, in going back and essentially going back in time and, and changing the story, changing the perception of one of forgiveness, of being forgiven, of, of, of ending that life free of those feelings, completely free of that energy, you know, feeling as if he had done well, he was a good person, that allowed him to then clear those chakras, which will now, in, in his engagements going forward, allow him to receive what he's, what he's needing to further his work. And that was the message. The main message there was that regardless of how we feel about any particular action, any particular incident, you know, it's up to us to forgive ourselves over it. Because we're the only ones that can punish ourselves. We're the only ones that can get in the way of whatever it is we need going forward to do to do the things we want to do to do the good work we want to do so that was really key and that was the journey and, and in this particular session this was what we used for that journey was what we call the death rites which is a very gentle way of actually helping someone someone's soul leave their body as it does when when we actually die so that we can travel through time. So this is the applied quantum physics aspect of this, that we can actually go back in time and do these things, make these changes, you know? And then we brought him gently back in. And you saw me bringing in his body. You saw me using my breath, and we used the breath to transmit energy. So I was literally taking that, that soul part, and I traveled with him on this journey to each of those past lives. And each of those we reclaimed his, his pure soul. We reclaimed that part of him that he had left there, you know, out of this sense of self-punishment of guilt. And we reclaimed that pure childlike soul, essentially, and then gathered all of that up and literally blew that back in into his chakras. And I blew the hummingbird as his power animal, as his reminder to allow himself to receive, allow himself to drink the nectar at each and every flower, whether or not he thought he did the right thing or not in the past. Because the world is still messy. He's still going to do things that he might feel bad about, people might react to negatively. But it's, it's up to him to let, let go of it in that moment, instead of holding it like he did for so many lifetimes. And so by bringing the hummingbird in, into his third chakra, that energy is actually there. I mean, there's hummingbirds all over the place making themselves very clearly known in the physical world that they're his power animal. But when we actually bring it in, it doesn't matter where he is. He can be in the middle of the city, but hummingbird's still there. And it's still there reminding him to, to you know, 
master that ability to receive, you know, unconditionally. And um, so that was what we blew into there. We blew the soul parts into his heart chakra, the center of his soul, the core of his being, of his essential self, you know. And then the gift we blew into his forehead. And this was about allowing his vision, his mind, to be in line with his heart. And that was the message at the end, which is, don't worry about your heart. Your heart's always pure. Your intent's always pure. It's only the mind that could decide otherwise. It's the internal dialogue that could decide that it's not or it is. But if this just follows in line and says, I don't really know. You know, how do I know that this particular action, this thing that I'm doing today, is, is ultimately good or bad? How will I know a year from now, ten years from now? So, the mind just needs to fall in line with the heart. And that's exactly what has happened. Okay. And now he's like a kid. He's running around on his little skateboard. He's a 50-year-old man. And he's... <laughs> so, there's the hummingbird. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Playful. Beautiful.